Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another edition of Kelsey's Corner. I'm Kelsey O'Donnell here in our digital studio, and this is a time where I get to break down both local and national sports topics. And like I say each week, if you like sports well, you're in the right place. I'd like to kick things off this week with a feel-good story out of South Central High School. Over the weekend, senior wrestler George Aino won his 100th career match. He is shining this year more than ever and continues to prove why he has reached this monumental achievement. Congratulations to George and all of the Falcons. Wednesday night was another eventful night for basketball on the high school ranks. We had a battle of the conference leaders in Kinston last night as they welcomed in Goldsboro to Lenore County. Kinston won the first matchup of the year in double overtime earlier this month. And this time around, the Vikings walked away with a much more settling win with a final score of 91-63. to And over in Winterville, South Central tipped off against non-conference matchup the Hertford County Bears. The Falcons proved tough and recorded the dub in 63-43 to last night. The final high school game was a matchup between the Aiden Grifton Chargers and the J.H. Rose Rampants. A tight game on the Chargers home court, but the Rampants, they slip away with a one-point win, 82-79. All right, and at the collegiate level, ECU dropped another tough one last night at home, 69-59 to the Houston Cougars here in town. But Jaden Gardner, he was the man to yet again give the Pirates opponent a hard time. Our Nolan Knight has the breakdown. The start of the 2019-2020 basketball season, everyone knew that sophomore Jaden Gardner was going to be the leader and backbone for the Pirates this year. But there were few that expected this. <laughs> Jaden Gardner has been the brightest of spots for ECU this year, averaging 20.9 points per game and 9.3 rebounds a game. All the while shooting 56% from the floor, he's been a statistical beast this season, leading the conference in scoring in the nation in free throw attempts. On Wednesday, Gardner dropped 29 points and added 19 boards against 21st ranked Houston. And after the game, even opposing head coach Kelvin Sampson couldn't get enough of him. I just love Jaden Gardner. That, that kid, you know, if you could just take his stamp and put winner on him, that's what he is. He's just a winner. Gardner's the best player we played against. Was, we played against nobody uh, that is more difficult. Gardner has caught the eye of the conference as well, as the 6'7", 255-pound Ford has been named the AAC Player of the Week twice this season, a milestone that no Pirate had previously won. But with all the accolades he's received this year, his message has been simple. He just wants to win. I mean, I just go out and play my game and um, just try to help my teammates, my coaches, and um, try to put on for uh, where I come from and my family. And I just, I just love the game of basketball. Jaden Gardner and the Pirates are in action again this Saturday when they travel to Philadelphia to take on Temple as they look for their first road win. For Down Your Side Sports, I'm Nolan Knight. All right, thanks, Nolan. And last night, ECU football was in the house for the basketball game. Mike Houston and the Pirates football team welcomed Blake Harrell as their new defensive coordinator. Harrell worked with Houston at both the Citadel and Lenore Ryan in the past, and he comes in as quite the decorated coach, ranking among national po polls in both defense and scoring defense last season. Our Nine Your Side Sports staff sat down with Harrell this afternoon, so stay tuned for his interview with Brian Bailey online later on. And over in the ACC, Syracuse has quietly become one of the hottest teams in the conference, winning five of their six last games. And as for UNC and NC State, they seem to have flipped roles a bit. Take a look. Tune in to Chase for the Championship tonight at 7 p.m. on our website at WNCT.com for the latest breakdown. And I'd like to flip a switch now as we are continuing to cover the tragic death of Lakers Kobe Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter Gigi, as well as seven other people who lost their lives in a helicopter crash over the weekend. Um, Vanessa Bryant, Kobe's wife, broke her silence yesterday, and here's what she said on Instagram. She said, in quote, my girls and I want to thank the millions of people who've shown support and love during this horrific time. 
We are completely devastated by the sudden loss of my adoring husband, Kobe, the amazing father of our children, and my beautiful, sweet Gianna, a loving, thoughtful, and wonderful daughter and amazing sister to Natalia, Bianca, and Capri. I'm not sure what our lives hold beyond today, and it's impossible to imagine life without them, but we wake up each day trying to keep pushing because Kobe and our baby girl, Gigi, are shining on us to light the way. Our love for them is endless. End quote. And my heart truly goes out to all of the nine people who lost their lives this weekend, um, especially the families and friends who are grieving. You are in my thoughts and prayers. And really, to truly help support the families affected by this tragedy, you can go to mambaon3.org. All right, moving to the national stage. The biggest weekend of sports is upon us. It's Super Bowl 54. And to talk about the weekend, I'm bringing in Nolan Knight. How's it going? Doing good, doing good. All right, so this weekend we've got the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I, I can't wait. Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> I mean, it, it's like a national holiday. Everyone stops what they're doing. Everything, everyone pays attention. And, and if and if you don't watch it, you're you're lost for a couple of days. So uh, it's one of those times where us sports people get, get to look like the guy that knows everything in the room, which is right. a lot of fun a lot of times when people, you know, don't always watch sports, but they watch <laughs> the Super Bowl. And then it's, it's good for our ego, I guess. <laughs> All right. Do you have a certain team? Just small point. Neither of us are from either Kansas City or San Francisco. So or pool for the team. You don't have to be from there. You're right. You're right. Um, personally, I have a little bit. I've got some ties. I'm from originally from outside of Philadelphia. So Andy Reid with the Chiefs really kind of hits home for me. I grew up watching the Philadelphia oh, yeah. Eagles oh, yeah. when he was head coach there. But also on the for the 49ers, they've got the first female coach. Um, her name, let me see, I got some footage I'll pull up. Her name is Katie Sowers. So she's the first American football coach and the first female coach in the Super Bowl. Now she's their offensive assistant coach for the 49ers, and she's been there since 2017. So I think this comes at such a great time when there's a lot of movement in the women's industry, but also she um, has become the first LGBTQ coach in the NFL, uh, publicly coming out in 2007, before the 2017 NFL season season. So that being said, are you pulling for a certain team? I think I'm going to ha have to pledge allegiance to the Kansas City Chiefs this time around. I, I grew up when I was in high school. I was really big Jamal Charles fans. I was from like Ooh, 2010, okay. 2014, just running back. He was gr one of the better backs in the league. He wasn't phenomenal. He won't be in the Hall of Fame one day or anything like that. But I really liked him for some reason. I loved him. I think you know, I had him on a fantasy team or something. That's why I liked him. And uh, I went to Virginia Tech. They have Kendall Fuller on the roster. Yeah, go Hokies. So, so I, ha I have a, uh, a connection there. So right. I, I think I have to go with Kansas City. And what's exciting is just I think it's so up in the air who, who's actually going to win. I know. And this so is awesome. I think, I think that's making it exciting to where you, you don't have a, a clear favorite in the game. Right, so I got some quick facts. Um, the first Super Bowl appearance for the Chiefs was 50 years ago. It's been so a long time. So they haven't been, they haven't won a Super Bowl since 1970, which is crazy. Um, they play the Minnesota Vikings, the Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> <laughs> um, which I think is really awesome. But also, these two teams have never met in a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Chiefs have just not been able to right. to take that next step, which is why you haven't seen these two teams face off. Obviously, San Francisco has had a lot of success over the years, and, and I think a lot of people are seeing some 49ers kind of fans resurface from, you know, the old Joe Montana days yeah. uh, when they were at, you know, the top of the league. And that's why they, they do have a, a big fan base and a passionate one, but they've kind of been, uh, you know, under the table for a while because they haven't been great recently, whereas the Chiefs, they have had all these great teams. They've just never been able to get that next step and make to the Super Bowl. And, and, you know, now both of these two teams who are really good are have, you know, kind of, you know, emerged from the hedges, if you will, uh, as as their fans, and, and, and they've uh, taken the next step, and, and they have strong fan bases, and, and it's going to be a, uh, a fun matchup and, and one that uh, I don't think anyone knows what's, what's going to happen once uh, first kickoff happens on Sunday night. Right, 6.30 p.m. This will also be the 11th time the Super Bowl has been played down in South Florida, which I think is really cool. I know we were speaking about this earlier. You kind of think of football around cold weather, so it is neat that people can go down, and it's almost like a big party in Florida. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's what, I mean, Super Bowl parties, that's, what, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. I mean, it's a celebration of the league and, and football and, and all around it. I, I think a lot of fans, you know, when they when they think of the Super Bowl, you think of some cold games, and I, I think a snowy Super Bowl is something that 
everyone would like to see, but realistically, right. if, you, if you want to see the best football and the best players and the best team win, it's got to be perfect conditions, and that's what you know South Florida will do for you or, or some other warmer weather venues, and, and I think Miami is one of the better venues uh, for it because uh, with, it, with it, of course, being down there. Right, so you got a favorite Super Bowl snack? <laughs> oh, that's tough. I, you can't go wrong with wings. Uh, I like mm-hmm. the more substantial Super Bowl snacks. I'm not a big chips and dip guy. Uh, more so like the wings, maybe cocktail shrimp, potato skins. I'm big on p- potato skins. That was always uh, my favorite with, you know, you fry them up and the bacon yeah. and mm, green onions so and good. stuff. I love potato skins. <laughs> Making me hungry. What I, time I, is I, it? I'll, I'll do time. potato <laughs> skins. I'm definitely potato skins. I think I've got to go with you the buffalo chicken chicken dip. I can't mm-hmm. speak right now. Can't go wrong. Or uh, my mom makes mean taco dip. So Ooh, we've always you have grown to bring up. Some in. Um, I know we were talking earlier too. I'm a Super Bowl baby. So I um, was born on a Super Bowl. So. I, not this year. Um, my birthday doesn't fall on Super Bowl Sunday. So but it's always a party for you. Yes, it's always a big <laughs> party for me, and it's always really fun. But um, if I had it my way, the Eagles would win every Super Bowl. I know people <laughs> yeah, listening yeah. probably are cringing right now. I know some people out in our newsroom will laugh at me later on for listening to this. you got some years to wait. <laughs> you, you've had your fun. Hey, I've had my let, fun. Let it, some other people. The, the Super Bowl the Eagles won um, recently was on my birthday, so it ended up being the best birthday ever. That'll go down oh, yeah. in record books. It's, yeah, big downfall <laughs> from there. Super Bowl, birthday, all together. All right, so kickoff, 6.30, and we are excited. We don't know who's going to win, but uh, that's our picks. So thank you so much for tuning in for another edition of Kelsey's Corner. I'll have another one next week on Thursday, so thanks for watching.